my name is Reagan. I work with House Plants for a Living. A lot of you guys know me from TikTok uh, and Instagram and all over the place. Um, and this is my first ever YouTube video. Wow. Today I'm specifically talking about propagating your trailing plants. And this is a essential thing to do if you want thick, lush, full trailing plants because of one important reason. So some plants, they grow new leaves from the base of their plant on a continuous basis. Trailing plants, they grow new leaves from the end of their stems. So this plant is going to grow from here and continue on, but it's not going to get new shoots that are going to come out from the base of the plant. Each stem is actually its own individual plant. So what me that means is you could have a plant that looks really full when it's in its little four inch pot, but as you up pot it and it grows really long, you just have four measly little strands in there and then it's never gonna look super full like you want it to when you see it in pictures or whatever it may be. I know you guys might be a little afraid when I bring out my scissors because no one wants to clip their plants, especially their trailing plants, because they want them to get long. And when I tell you you need to make them shorter, you're going to be very upset with me, but you have to. For the longevity of your plant, it'll make things a lot better. It's kind of like getting a haircut. If you were to never cut your hair, you would have all this damage and you would just by the end have like a couple long strings that look horrible. By getting regular trims, your hair stays nice and healthy and full as it grows out long. The same goes for your plants. Let's do it. First, cutting shears. Um, important, you want them to be sharp, you want them to be clean. So it is great to bleach your cutting shears in between cutting different plants because if one has pests or a disease and then you cut a healthy plant, it could spread the disease. Or I've already done that. Just kidding, I'm lying. These aren't clean, but I'm just going to take the risk. But just know that there is a risk of spreading disease. So I advise you to bleach your cutting shears. Don't do what I'm doing. Okay, so once your cutting shears are clean, <laughs> um, what you want to do is we want to save as many uh, leaves as possible because each leaf could become a new branch. Okay, so your nodes are these circular little markings on your stem, typically found where the leaves are attached, and that is where your roots are going to grow out of. They're not going to just grow out of the middle part of the stem, so it's really important that you have at least one leaf and one node on each clipping. So, here we are with our strand here. I'm going to keep these three leaves. Mm, actually, there's a tiny little node right here. Right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut above the next leaf. Now we have our little clipping. We have leaf, leaf, and then there's a node right here. So the node is going to need to go under the water. So I'm going to just pull off this leaf right here, pinch it off, and I'm going to make sure when I put it in water, spoiler alert, it's going in water, that this node is submerged in the water. So I'm going to set that aside. This leaf is not going to grow anything. Some plants grow roots from leaves, but this one not going to happen. Okay, so this is where I made the cut, just above the leaf. And I'm going to look for another node. This one has another node right here, so I can cut above the next leaf. And here's another clipping. Um, okay, so I'm going to use these three leaves, and then there's a node right there. So I'm cutting right above the previous leaf. There we go. Here's another leaf. Um, it has a node right here. These, this is called a purple wandering Jew. I don't think that's the best name for this plant, but I don't know of another common household name. If you know one, let me know. Um, but these have a lot of nodes. If you're doing something like a pothos, you aren't going to have as many nodes. Okay, I'm back with the pothos. This pothos isn't looking great because I forgot about it. It has been neglected for a long time, underwatered. But the nodes are really obvious on this one. See, it even has a little root growing out already, an aerial root. Okay, so here's the leaf that I'm going to put above the water. Here's the next node in line. So I'm going to go to the next node below that, cut right above it, right? And then I'm going to pinch off this leaf, and I'm going to stick that in water. Okay, so continue on with our wandering jew plant. 
Um, like I said, this one has more nodes than just apple leaves, so it's a little bit easier. I'm not wasting as much as I had to with the pothos. Um, but we're looking for the top leaf, the next node down, and then cut just above the next node below that. Da da da. Leaf, node. Actually, there's a node right here. So cutting above the node below that. Da da da. And I'm gonna leave this much in the plant and just continue on with the next one. It's looking pretty sad right now, but I promise you, just give it a month and this will be looking beautiful. Okay, so now that you've made all your clippings, what you wanna do is actually leave them alone for 24 to 48 hours. The reason is they need a chance to callus over where you made your cut or else when you put them in water, they'll absorb way too much water. Um, don't worry, they'll be fine. Actually, I did a lot of these cuttings about a month ago and I've just stuck them in here and I lost, you know, a leaf or two, but they're fine. Next step is to get yourself a cup of water. Um, this one's got a little bit of dirt in it, but it's fine. And you're going to take your cuttings that have calloused over and you're going to stick them in the water, making sure that the node that you left is submerged and the leaves you want to attempt to keep out of the water. Um, it's not the end of the world if you have some leaves in the water, but in general, oops, I never cut this. In general, you want the leaves to be out of the water and the nodes to be submerged like so. When your roots are about an inch to two inches long, that's when the optimal time to transport them back into soil is. Um, you don't want to leave them in here too long because roots actually absorb both nutrients and oxygen. And the water actually does have a tiny bit of oxygen, but no nutrients and the oxygen is going to be depleted fairly quickly and then the plant is going to suffer. So you don't want to leave it in too long, um, but you want to wait until you've got at least an inch or two inches of roots and then it's time to transplant. It's time to transplant your cuttings. So what I'm going to do is dig teeny tiny little holes for the roots to go into very gently. I'm using this bamboo stake, but you can use a pencil or whatever. Um, and I'm just looking for areas that there, you know, might be some room to fit a root. And I'm making a little hole, do, 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 like so. You might crunch a little bit of roots that are already in there. It's not a big deal. Try your best not to, but a little bit of root crunching is fine. And then you're just going to want to make sure that the plant is, just like it was in the water, submerged into the soil so that all these roots are covered and that the leaves are on top. I made my little hole and then I'm as gently as I can tucking the roots into that hole with the leaves on top and then you can just kind of move the soil around. We can add some more soil on top at the end. If you're running out of room in your pot, you can cram quite a few in there, uh, especially something like a pothos. A lot of these trailing plants, they don't mind being kind of root bound. Um, but if you're finding you can't fit any more in there, it might be time to go up a pot size. As you can see, I've got my clippings all potted up. It doesn't look anything spectacular yet, but what's gonna happen is they're all gonna grow out. This is gonna be a very full, bushy, beautiful plant. Um, and spoiler alert, actually, this was my original plant. It was quite full, but I kept breaking it. These stems are pretty uh, delicate. And so I broke, up, broke off a bunch of stems and I propagated them. So a lot of these came from this plant and what you saw in this pot originally that I pulled clippings from were actual clippings from this plant. And it's been about a month that they turned into that nice little beautiful trailing situation we had going on. And I'm just gonna pop this back into my decorative pot. This would be a great time to water it um, right after you put those clippings in. And yeah, I hope this was helpful. Whew, my first YouTube video in the books. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions on what would be helpful on this channel, please let me know and comment below and subscribe. This is my first time being like, subscribe. Um, but yeah, that would be really helpful. Lots of good stuff to come and um, thank you for joining me. <laughs>